And we're back for Tennessee's. And this time, we're attending June's piano uh, competition thingy. It's April 18th. A Tuesday. Such a beautiful day. The sun is bright, the sky is blue, the weather is mild. The breeze outside ruffles the leaves of the trees, covering the parks and streets in green and pink, carrying the scent of greenery in the air. It is, without a doubt, a wonderful day. Nothing could possibly ruin it. No one could possibly be sad or upset or preoccupied on a day like this. Well, except for... June. June, seriously, sit down. I try repeating it for the umpteenth time, hoping that this time he'll actually register what I'm saying. Or that he won't disregard me, at least. I, 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 I can't sit down. I, I can't get myself sat down. I just can't. His voice is two keys higher than usual, and he's stuttering so much I can barely make out what he's saying. His entire body is shivering. Is this adrenaline coursing through him, or is he just quaking in fear? Honestly, I have no idea. Come on, why are you so nervous? Didn't you say you performed live before? Didn't you used to take part in competitions? Yeah, but it's been so long since the last time. How long exactly? About seven years. Are you asking me or telling me? I, I, I'm not sure. Great, he's not making sense. Come on, June, you have experience with this. You should have learned to believe in yourself by now. Having experience doesn't mean I can't screw up. A single mistake could stop me from getting to the next stage. Look, just just sit down for a minute and try to compose yourself, okay? I put my hands on both of his shoulders and force him down on one of the benches they have in the lobby. Honestly, though, this place is massive. It's so full of people that even I feel a bit on edge. I can definitely understand why June would be bothered. Just breathe, okay? Nice, long, deep breaths. I try showing him some breathing exercises, but he fails pathetically at all of them. His breathing is so rapid and ragged that I'm afraid he might just give himself a heart attack. Actually, could he be having a panic attack? Rapid, shallow breathing, stuttering, pacing around nervously. It does sound like the descriptions I've heard. Then again, I'm no doctor, so I can't really tell. I kneel down to stay eye level with him, putting one hand on his shoulder and the other on his chest. I immediately start to feel awkward as memories of what happened yesterday flash in my mind. Still, I try to ignore them as best I can. Right now, I need to help June. All right, first things first. What was that I learned about panic attacks? I remember Shuichi telling me about times. June, look at me, okay? Look me in the eyes. Can you do that for me? June sets his eyes on my face. His eyes are bloodshot and scared, but he does, as I say, slowly nodding for me. Good. Now... Focus on my hand on your chest. Can you feel my hand on your chest? Can you feel it moving when you breathe? June looks down at my hand, making me move it to his chin and raise his head so he only looks at my face. No, you don't need to look at it. Just feel my hand on your chest. Oh, okay. Now, I want you to breathe for me, okay? Just focus on moving my hand around when you do it. Four seconds in, two seconds out. Four seconds in, two seconds out. Can you do that for me? I, I'll try. June starts to take deep breaths. He struggles a bit at first, but his breathing starts to become more and more regular. It takes a couple of minutes, but I can feel his body relaxing with my hands. I make sure to smile at him the whole time, reminding him that I'm here to help. I feel a bit awkward about doing this in such a public place, but my number one priority should be June. There we go. You're doing a lot better already. Do you feel any better? A little. I don't feel like I'm going to suffocate anymore. That's good. See, there's nothing for you to be afraid of. This is just a day like any other. You're fine. He swallows hard and nods. It makes him feel a bit better to be able to help in him some way. At least I don't have to stand around and feel helpless. Now, how about we talk about something more pleasant, huh? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Well, not really. Come on, there must be something. Just say the first thing that comes to mind. Well, there's this book series I really like. new book came out just last week, but I don't have the money to buy it yet. Oh, that's cool. What's this series about? I was just looking to distract him with some pleasant conversation, but this might actually be interesting. 
Well, it's called the Murderous Queen Trilogy. It's a story set in a fantasy world about a former queen who escapes death after her husband is overthrown and killed in a rebellion and goes around looking for vengeance. That doesn't sound at all like something I expect you to read. Why, you think I can't enjoy a mature, complex story? Well, what? No, no! Yes. Well, it's just that you tend to go for more um, happier stories. I've heard you talking about some games before, and they're all very teen friendly. This one sounds like something that wouldn't be recommended for a 17 year old. Well, the rating is 17 plus. I'm 19, I don't see the issue there here. True enough. If a bit out of character, at least in my opinion. And the book that was just released was what? The second one? June 6 shakes his head in negative. It's the last one. I read the first two and they're really good. I don't admit, I was just 14 when the first one came out, so I wasn't actually supposed to read. My dad was just feeling very tired when he took me out to buy a birthday present and didn't look at what book I picked. Sounds like lousy parenting in its finest. <laughs> Mom was really mad when she found the book. Oh, poor dad got the brunt of it. As he should then, a 14 year old kid reads something like that. Then again, I played games that were like that when I was a kid, so I guess I'm not one to talk. Well, it sounds like you'd like it a lot. What was the name of his third book, just for curiosity's sake? I might just end up buying it for him later. Uh, what was it called again? Oh, The Red Keep. Huh, that's an interesting name. I might end up picking up a copy of these myself. Well, what else? Tell me more about it. Um, I'd rather not. You might want to read them in the future. I don't want to spoil you. Psh, spoilers are my bread and butter. I don't care about spoilers. Come on, tell me more. Anything that keeps you talking and stops you from freaking out. Well, okay, but first, can you take your hand from my chest? There's some people looking. It's a bit embarrassing. Ah, I only notice it when he points out, but I pull away immediately and get up on my feet. I try looking slightly around and see there are a couple of heads turned in our direction. Damn, my cheeks feel hot right now. I guess June wasn't the only one being distracted by our conversation. I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just sit right here. I take a seat next to June on the bench. All the awkwardness that I was feeling because of what happened yesterday has now come back full force. Damn, it feels weird all of a sudden. No, no, power through it. I've gotten this far. I can't allow him to start moping again. Well, anyway, you're going to tell me more about those books? June smiles and immediately sets my heart at ease. It's so good to see a smile back on his face. Well, the story starts with Ella. That's the protagonist's name, by the way. Ella Richal in the tavern. A man sits next to her and tells her she looks pretty and starts flirting with her. She asks him to buy her a drink. When he's not looking, she slips a bit of viper venom in his ale and excuses herself to go to the bathroom after she sees him drink it. Then she escapes the tavern while he dies. Now we get taken to a flashback about how she was forced to go on exile after her husband was dethroned and murdered and their children were killed. the ones who masterminded the rebellion. Then she... As the minutes start to pass, I see that June's body has already stopped twitching entirely. I finally begin to rest a bit easy, knowing that he's calmed down immensely. He continues to talk to me about his book, enthusiastically describing the story to me while still keeping himself very vague at certain points. He starts to perk up considerably, his gestures become more full of energy and his smile becomes wider. After what I assume have been 15 minutes, he's almost back to his usual self, which makes me sigh in relief. Are you alright, Hector Sam? I'm not boring you, am I? Oh no, no, nothing like that. I'm just relieved. Relieved? About what? He cocks his head to the side like a curious little puppy. It's adorable seeming behaving like this again. I decide there's no harm in telling him. Well, look at how much you've calmed down. You're acting like yourself again. June blinks a couple of times, his eyes becoming wider. Hey, you're right, I do feel better. See, I'm just glad I managed to calm you down. Ah! I'm suddenly wrapped in a massive orange fur when June pounces on me out of nowhere, enveloping me in a warm, tight hug. Thank you so much, I didn't even realise that you were worrying about me all this time. While the feeling is certainly nice, the first thing I worry about is the people around us seeing... Well, this. I give him a few taps on his arm. Okay, okay, easy there, Tiger. We're still in public, remember? All oh, right. His tail immediately stands upright as he pulls back from me, scratching his red cheeks in embarrassment. Sorry, I just kind of lost control. 
Oh, it's all right, I don't mind. It's a nice feeling. Just not when we're in public, okay? Okay. Oh man, he's just too precious. Please, June, never change. June Kobayashi? A voice calls June's name. We both turn our heads to search for it at the same time. We both see a lion dressed in a red shirt and a pair of cargo pants. The lion stares at June with wide eyes, his mouth opening in an O shape. Oh my god, I didn't believe it when I saw your neighbor list participants, but it really is you. I'm, I'm sorry, but who are you? All oh, right, it's been seven years. No one you wouldn't recognize me. I grew a lot taller and didn't even have a mane back then. Wait, a Kutagawa Kankun? The lion smiles, putting a hand on his waist, making the bracelets he has on his wrist clink. You haven't changed much, all things considered. Well, you grew a bit in both directions. Still, I heard you gave up the piano after that instance seven years ago. What brought you back? Noting the change in June's demeanour, the lion awkwardly scratches the back of his neck. Oh, sorry, I let curiosity get the better of me. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. Still, it's good to see you again. Uh, maybe I'll finally have my revenge. Uh, I'm sorry to intrude in your conversation, but what's going on here? What's this talk about vengeance? My sudden interjection makes June jump up from his seat. He apparently completely forgot that I was here. Oh, that's right. Hector-san, this is Shinji Kutagawa. He used to be a friend of mine back when I still participated in competitions. Oh, please, let's just call it what it is. No need to play friends with me. You and I were bitter rivals. Huh? We were? He falters, gasping and gaping in shock. Hey, are you kidding me? Of course we were rivals. I always had to share the podium with you. Well, you have no idea how bitter about it I was. Wait, we shared the podium? I don't remember that. June scratches his cheek as the lion looks at him, completely flabbergasted. Are you seriously telling me you forgot about me? Well, I didn't forget. I remember talking to you before and after the competitions. I don't remember how you played or where you placed. I wasn't really paying attention. What? Well, you self-absorbed prick. I spent all this time thinking about you and you didn't even remember me? Big comical tears start forming around his eyes as he begins to pout. Ah, so sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, forget it. You and I will square off on the stage and I will destroy you. Just make sure that weak set list of yours doesn't spell your doom. I'll make sure the name Shinji Akutagawa is one you'll never forget. He runs off without a second glance, leaving us to eat dust. Well, that was a bit... weird. June nods in the affirmative, still looking confused. By the way, Hank, Sam, why did the others get in here? It's already... 9.35? Well, Keiko and Sai said they'd arrive about 9.40, so they should be getting here soon. Shuichi will probably still take at least an hour since he's dealing with some issues at school. Issues? Yeah, I uh, kind of got to get excused to come here today. Shuichi's at school right now, trying to set things straight so I won't get punished for skipping. Wait, don't you need parental permission for that? How is he going to get you excused? Well, he'll just work his magic. He's student council president. I'm sure he'll manage. I, I see. Wait... Why is he the one getting you excused? Uh, well, it was his choice to go in my place. Why would he do that? Well, he was a bit worried that I'd... Uh... June stares at me with inquisitive eyes. Yes? He was a bit worried I'd say something I shouldn't and end up getting in trouble. So... He basically said you were too incompetent to do it. That is not what he said. That's what he meant. Yeah. When did you get so snarky? I learned from watching you guys talking to each other. Isn't this what you do? Oh boy, I suddenly feel like a bad influence. Hehe, <laughs> don't worry. I'm just pulling your leg. It was funny seeing that look on your face. You created a monster. Anyway, can you try calling Shuichi san and ask him if he's going to take long? I kind of need him to be here soon. Well, your performance isn't due until 12.30. Well, yeah, but all the performers need to go backstage to prepare half an hour before the first performance starts. And we just stay there to concentrate on our performance. Wait, isn't the first performance in an hour? Yeah. What? Why didn't you say this sooner? Why? You, you didn't ask. So if I don't ask you something, you just won't tell me? Crap, I have to call Shuichi and tell him to hurry. Sorry. Later. I walk away from June, going to the entrance of the concert hall where the phone signals a bit better. Two bars. That should be plenty. 
Let's see if I can actually call him. Hector? Get here now! Jeez, are you trying to make me deaf or something? What's going on? Is everything okay? Are you still in school? Oh, I just left. I'm heading to the train station now. Why? Run to it. You must get the first train that comes by. What? The next train is in five minutes. There's no way I can catch it. What's this even about? June has to go backstage in half an hour. If you don't hurry here, you won't be able to see him until after its performance. Sweet. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I have to pull the phone away from my face as I'm at risk of going deaf. Jeez, this isn't my fault. Why am I the one getting yelled at? Didn't you just complain about me doing just that? I don't care. Why, was I, why wasn't I informed sooner? Because I didn't know myself. June only told me about it now. I hear groaning on the other side, followed by the sound of running steps. Forget it. I'm going to try and make it to the station time for the next train. Don't let me go anywhere until I get there. I'll try, but I don't know if I can... Don't let him go anywhere until I get there. Just like that, he shuts the call off. I'm left with ringing in my ear. Well, I guess that takes care of that. Now to go back to... J Boo! Ah! I nearly fall on my ass when Case Cage suddenly jumps in front of me, scaring the crap out of me. Heh <laughs> gotcha. What the hell? Sorry, I saw you on your phone. I couldn't resist. When did you even get here? Oh, about 30 seconds ago. I came in with Saya, but she left to look for Kobayashi. And like I said, I couldn't resist, so I stayed behind. Case Cade chuckles, puffing up his chest with satisfaction. I sigh. That's... that's just great for you. Can we please get back to June and apparently Saya? Wow, someone's in a bad mood. Yeah, I didn't have a very good day. What happened? Well, it was crazy, really. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Case K scratches at his chin, obviously curious. Oh, try me. Okay, then. Well, I came here to the concert hall today and met up with June. Then something happened and I had to step away for a second. Yeah? Case K's always been a sucker for dramatic stories. I make sure to make a dramatic pause. He gobbles it up like a rabbit with carrots. Or a hair. Yeah, doesn't matter. Then, all of a sudden... This crazy lunatic hair jumps out of nowhere and screams at my face. Its face immediately deflates. I see the twinkle of humour and curiosity in his eyes die out. Ha ha, very funny. You think so too? Great, I thought I myself thought he was hysterical. You really are an idiot. Well, consider that payback for nearly giving me a heart attack. Fine, fine, I get it. Let's just go join the others already. Without waiting for response, Kay-Kun walks away from me. Hey, don't just leave me hanging. Jeez, did Kay-Kun run towards them? How did he get there so much quicker than I did? The first thing I noticed when I reached them is that Saya seems to be talking very excitedly. Wait, what's with the look on these two's faces? I pulled one keen and then I hit it with my racket like zoom, then it hit the ground and made a huge paw. Is... is that an actual conversation? I'm not sure if that's even Japanese. Ah, Hector-kun. Saya quickly hops towards me, waving. Hey, Saya. Good morning. She jabs me in the torso with her outstretched hand. It'll be right between the ribs. Ugh. I have to hold on to Keikun's shoulder to keep myself from falling down. She completely knocked the air out of me with that. I can't breathe. Hmm? Saya stands in a spot, looking innocent. Are you all right, Hector? You don't look so good. Of course I don't look good. You just knocked the air out of me. What? I didn't hit you that hard. It was just a friendly poke. No, Mr. Grishi san that was a bit... You won't be left to walk within arm's reach of you. Oh, come on, I was just wishing him a good morning. She stares guiltily at me as I gasp for air. You answer someone when you're trying to be nice to them. I'm afraid of what you do when you're angry. I've heard some stories. Oh, really? Do tell. Well, there's a time when... Hey, quit it! Oh, yes, ma'am. Ah... Uh, Oh, but I wasn't ready to get stabbed in the gut first thing in the morning. I already said I was sorry for that. Actually, you did. She gives him a frightening, murderous glance. I caught my ashy couldn't. She said you already apologised for it. What? Seriously, trying to reflect the blame onto someone else now? Great, the day has barely started and you're already terrorising the community. <laughs> well, I feel I can finally stand on my own two feet again. Uh, I thought I was going to puke my guts out after that one. Sorry. At least now she's apologising. 
What were you two talking about anyway? Oh, I watched a video of a Chancha level tournament yesterday. It was amazing. You mean the one that happened in Miami? You saw it too? A little. I watched about 15 minutes of it before it made me want to go outside and practice. It must be nice being to watch the things you like on TV. Concerts and orchestras don't get nearly as much attention as sports do. There are not many people like classical music to begin with, so it'd be a tough sell. There's still some channels dedicated to that sort of content. And they're usually premium channels you have to pay top dollar to watch. That's uh, true. You have to worry about that sort of thing for long. You'll be going to Music Academy next year. You'll see tens of concerts and orchestras. Yeah. Ah, damn it, sire. Do you have any idea how long it took me to calm him down? They had to go and remind him of it. It's not that easy. Unless I graduate from a very prestigious academy, finding a job as composer would be hard. Those are really expensive. I need a scholarship to be able to attend and an impeccable record to get one. I basically have to join every piano competition possible and have to win them all just to have a chance. Yeesh, sounds rough. That's what I get for being off the stages for seven years. Oh yeah, this reminds me. June apparently has a rival. What was his name again? Uh, Teruyami Akiyama. What was the line called again? Akutagawa-kun? Ah oh, yes, that's his name. Boy, he's way off the mark on this one. Yeah, it's this big lion guy. He said he was June's biggest rival back when he still performed in competitions. Apparently June beat him every single time. He's just seen it. He came here swearing vengeance and all that. Wow, sounds a bit cliche. June lets out a nervous laugh. Uh, yeah, Akutagawa, Akutagawa Kuhn was always pretty intense. He had a penchant for being dramatic, even when we were kids. I guess that hasn't changed even now. Well, this could be fun. That means we actually get to watch some competition. Oh, I know. I have the list of participants here with me. We could check out what he's performing. Oh, that's a great idea. I haven't checked it yet. Kun pulls a flyer from his pocket and folds it. Any of the pictures of many kids with some details written next to them. Seems that these are their set lists. Each player is allotted 15 minutes to perform and they can form as many songs as they want in that time. Let's see. Kobayashi-kun, you're going with... Allegro Appassionato and Chopin's Etude Op Opus 25, number 12. Hmm, not quite hitting the 15 minutes mark. Ah, uh, yeah, I was a bit afraid stamina might be an issue, so I chose to keep my set list a bit on the short side. I'm actually surprised you know these songs. Really? Son of a rich house? Well, I was forced fed this kind of music since I was seven. My grandmother tried to force me to play the violin. It doesn't sound like it was very fun. It wasn't, but I survived. Anyway, let's see. Kutagawa, Kutagawa. Ah, oh, there he... Huh? Keiko nearly buries his face in the paper. Huh? His voice is so loud it leaves my ears ringing. Jesus, give us a warning before you do that. Is there something wrong with him? Well, well he's performing a uh, Franz Liszt. I stared at him in confusion. Is that name supposed to mean something to it? I look to the side and see June's face has nearly lost all its colour. June, are you okay? What song? His voice came out crackly and incredibly small. The uh, Grand Fantasy de Bravoureux sur la, ch la Clochette. The who of what now? June swallows audibly. I'm sure his face has got at least three tones whiter. His voice comes out almost in a monotone. Well, Franz Liszt is a world renowned composer. His works are said to be some of the most technically difficult in existence. That song, Grand Fant Fantasy, is considered one of his most difficult pieces. Not many pianists attempt a play because of how difficult and imagined it is. That song is exactly 14 minutes and 59 seconds long. Even an easier piece, stamina would be a concern. That song, though, if he plays it mildly wide, well, it's going to almost certainly win a competition. If he plays it well enough, he'd even get world recognition. That's how difficult that piece is. Oh, wait, while well, you're saying it, something's already got this in the bag. Do you think he can even pull it off? Yeah, I mean, didn't you say it's even professional stint away from that song? What makes you think a high schooler can play it? Why would he submit it as a set list if he can't play it? Keiko, you're not helping. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be realistic. Right. Seven years ago, I don't think he could have. If he were good enough to do this song, I'd remember it, but... I, I need to talk to the organisers. I cut June off he's able to walk away, putting myself in his path. Whoa, 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 don't tell me you're going to be dropping out because of this. I notice June clenching his fist so hard, I'm afraid his claws are going to puncture the palm of his hand. I'm going to increase the difficulty of my own set list. 
Oh, oh, calm down for just a second there. Didn't you say just a second ago you chose your songs because stamina was a concern? You increased the difficulty even further then. I have to fight fire with fire. And I understand the comment he made on my set list. It wasn't bold enough. It's going to completely bury me unless I take a risk. Or do you even go to perform? You haven't practiced any of the songs. Well, two I already know by heart. I used to perform them a lot when I was younger. Oh, which ones? Well, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata Third Movement, Presto Agitato, and... Wait, I remember that name. Isn't that the song you were playing when we met? He nods. It was the song I played the most. It was almost always in my set list for all the competitions I took part in. I still remember walking into the music room that day. The other one is Chopin's Etude Opus 25 No. 11, Winter Wind. They might not be as difficult as the song Akuta Gawakun shows, but they're both very technical. If I played two of them together, I might have a chance of winning. They're also incredibly fast-paced and demanding, as you can even handle playing the two together. You'd be mashing the keys almost non-stop for ten minutes. If Akuta Gawakun is going to take this much risk with his song selection, I have to do the same. The difference is he had time to practice his song, you didn't. You were too busy practicing your old set list. June purses his lip, shoving his hand down his pockets and looking down at the floor. Well, I know that, but I have to try. Like I said, I know these two songs by heart. I've performed them so many times, I can play them in my sleep. But can you play them as well as you need to? There's guys' performance is even remotely decent, then yours is going to be absolutely perfect to be able to win. Well, I know that. June raises his voice, making both side and I jump back a step. Case Case stares at him, bewildered. I even noticed a few heads turning our way. June, realising the sudden attention coming our way, crosses his arms, looking back down the floor. I know that. But if I don't do it, then I'm just going to guarantee a loss. You said it yourself, even with those two songs, I need to be absolutely perfect to stand a chance. What chance do you think I have with my current list? Kun crosses his arms, rubbing his right elbow with his hands, he looks away, biting his lip. Uh, none. Exactly. The two just stand awkwardly rooted to their spots, looking at each other. The atmosphere has suddenly become so weird and awkward that it's hard for me to say anything. Well, if that's how it is, then you should just get to it already. That's when Sire speaks up, drawing everyone's attention to herself. She stands there, smiling, but can either completely oblivious of the weird mood surrounding all of us, or just simply not caring about it. I'm not even sure if they're going to allow me. The set lists are decided weeks in advance. Well, you won't know if they will until you try. Nothing's going to happen if you don't try. You're right, I'm going to be right back. June walks away looking for the competition's organisers. Now that I think about it, one of us should probably go with him, huh? I exchange glances to his sire, apparently picks right about what I'm thinking. I'm going to go after Kobayashi Kuhn, make sure he doesn't get lost. Keiku nods in agreement. Uh, probably for the best, let's not forget he still gets lost at school. I am probably past him getting lost here. Alright, I'll catch up to you guys later. Uh, Kobayashi Kuhn, wait up! With that, Kei Kun and I are left alone in the middle of the busy lobby. Well, I guess that's that. Hopefully he doesn't end up in that much trouble. Yeah, I'm still surprised you know classical music, though. What, really? You two? Come on! Rich kid from a traditional family? You really doubted for even a second they wouldn't be exposed to classical music? You said your grandmother, grandmother forced you to practice the violins. Does that mean you play? A little. I was forced to practice for three years. I purposely did badly when she came to watch just to spite her. Then she just gave up saying I was horrid at it. I was never forced to touch an instrument again. Heh, yeah, only she knew I was just faking it. I was actually kind of decent at it. I just hated the damn thing. Dad got the roar in the deal, though. Fully tells me she was much more relentless when he was a kid. She forced him to pick up the piano she wanted the prestige of having his son be a pianist. Then he fell in love with the piano and decided to become a professional pianist. She, of course, was all too happy to oblige since he's only the second child and was never going to inherit the business anyway. Then, right when he landed his dream offer to play for a prestigious orchestra in France, his brother died and she forced him to take up the business. Oh wait, so she... She forced him to play the instrument when he didn't want to, then when he decided he actually liked it and wanted to make his life about it, she took it away from him and forced to become the businessman. One of the only one of the many reasons I hate my grandmother. That's really awful. I'm surprised you even told me this. You never said much about your home life. Well, no one's ever asked, and I never really had any reason to say it. This time, it just kind of came up as an interesting tidbit in the conversation we were already having. So you won't volunteer any information about yourself unless someone asks you. Nope, I'm not that interested in the person to just start talking about myself for no reason. Unless it's something that can be relevant to the conversation, that is. 
So, you're saying if I ask some questions about you, you'd answer them? Uh, maybe later. Why later? So you are evading this after all. No, it's just I see Arata coming our way and it looks like he might drop any second. What? <laughs> Jun-kun, where? He went over to the organizer's office. What? I told you to keep him from leaving until I got here. Chuichi grabs my shoulders, bearing his fangs at me in anger. Uh, as much as I love getting blamed for everything, I put both of his hands away from my arms. He hasn't gone backstage, just went to have a word with the organiser of the competition see if he could change his set list. Oh. He stares at me awkwardly, slinking back to a less threatening position and scratching the back of his neck. I cross my arms and shift all my weight to my left leg, giving him a smug look. Shuichi looks down at the floor, embarrassed. Oh, sorry. I laugh, having some innocent fun at his expense. By the way, why are you so sweaty? You smell like you just ran a marathon. Keikun pinches his nose mid-sentence, making his voice come out all nasally and funny. Well, that's because I did. I had to run from our school to the station under five minutes if I wanted to catch the closest train. Then I had to run from the station all the way over here. I give him a thumbs up. Good job. I can barely even stand. Don't praise me if I were a kid who finally learned to clean the table. All right. Who's a good boy? Who's a good... What am I, a dog? Shuichi grabs my shoulders again, giving me a firm shake. Well, technically... Shut up. Keikun's liver quiver up another half-smile, full of smugness and satisfaction. Well, what else do you expect me to say? I didn't know I had to praise you every time you did something nice. Like you said, you're not a kid or a dog. Well, technic... Shut up! Keikun chuckles, seemingly very happy with himself. You don't have to praise me, it's just... It feels nice when you do, okay? Alright, alright, I get it. Eric Shepard's put my hand on top of his head, petting affably a few times, even scratching the back of his ears a little bit. You did good, Sho. Junior's going to be very happy that you made it. Aye, aye. He blushes furiously, looking down at his feet instead of me. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, he did great, man. It's really nice that he went through all that trouble for June. Well, it wasn't that much trouble. In the corner of my eye, I can see Case Case stifling a laugh. Hey, he's never seen Shuichi being bashful before. I admit it's quite a 180 from his usual attitude. A devious idea shines in my mind. I don't hesitate to try it. Yeah, you did good. You did very good. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? He blushes further, muttering out his words almost incoherently. I... Hey, wait a second. He steps away from me, looking super pissed. What did you almost make me say? Unable to hold any longer, Keikun bursts into laughter, making sure you finally remember he's actually there. I have no idea what it is I just saw, but I'm glad to have seen it. What? what? Shuichi blushes something fierce. Even the tips of his ears go red as they both flop downwards on his face. You'll pretend you never saw this. Ha! We both know that's going to be impossible. Oh, you suck. I'm well aware of that. What else is new? You already had your fun, Keikun. Lay off him a little. Oh, I'm just getting started. Well, just stop, okay? All right, all right, I won't tease him about it anymore. Thank you. Shuichi breathes a sigh of relief as his entire body relaxes. All right, all right, fine. You're left with the tea, Shuichi game. Sure, let's play the please go patch yourself dry in the bathroom game instead. I heard it's very fun. But while you're at it, please use some deodorant. This strong smell of sweaty dog is offensive to my nose. Well, now you're just going out of your way to insult me. Keikun pinches his nose again and starts breathing to his mouth. I'm doing no such thing. My nose is just really sensitive and the smell is starting to make me nauseous. Well, Hector, you don't mind it, right? I don't really mind your smell. What? See, I took... But that doesn't change the fact that you're in public. You should take other people into consideration. Even if Keikun and I don't mind it, there are other people who are going to be sitting next to us. You should do it so as not to bother them. Uh. Why is it you're only reasonable when being reasonable is something that would annoy me? Why are you being so against this in the first place? Can't believe you'd be okay being sweaty and smelly in public. Well, I'm not, I just... Shuichi kicks up some dust from the floor, looking down at his feet. Oh god, I'm not going to wait 15 minutes for you to finally admit this. I turn to Keikun. Shuichi's afraid of public bathrooms. What? 
You are such a tattletale. What? Why? Why do you be afraid of public bathrooms? Well, I'm not afraid of them. Not well, exactly. Well, I just think they're really, really gross. I'd rather not go inside one. Like I can catch an STD just by breathing the air inside them. What? This building is national property. The whole place is spotless. You could eat off the bathroom's counters. Ew, no, don't even say it's a joke. I think I can feel my stomach crawling up and curling into itself into a ball. You're weird. I guess this explains why I never saw you go into the bathroom whenever we go out. But wait, what about school? Doesn't that count as a public bathroom? Are you kidding? I spend more time at school than I do at my own home. That place is already a second home to me. What would that make any sense? Shuichi scratches his neck, looking away. In essence, Shuichi is basically just weird. How cruel of you to say this to my face. Oh, please, I didn't say anything that you yourself haven't said before. Oh, but I... Ah, screw it, you're right. Keiko and la I laugh at his reaction, making him shoot us a death glare. So I don't like dirty places, so what? Everyone's got something they don't like. Yeah, but people don't usually have fears that keep them from doing something as basic as going to the bathroom. I told you, I'm not afraid of going in the bathroom. I just... Just? Well, I'd just rather stay away from it because it makes me feel uneasy and uncomfortable, okay? Dude, that's the textbook definition of fear. Keisuke laughs, making Shuichi shoot him yet another death glare. Oh, bite me. Hey, sure, hairs have pretty strong teeth. He opens his mouth a little, pointing at his teeth. What? I didn't mean literally. Too late. Keikun lunges at Shuichi with his mouth open, going for his neck. Are you a hare or a vampire? Shuichi reacts fast, pushing him away. What? No. Keikun falls back, laughing. I'm sorry, your action was just too funny, I couldn't resist. You do realize we're in public, right? Yeah, so we're horsing around it all. Big deal. You have the weirdest sense of humour, and of timing. It's the pot calling the kettle black. Okay, you two behave. Don't want to be seen with two guys acting like complete lunatics in a public place. Why do you even care? It's not like you're going to meet these people again. You're an athlete, you're part of a completely different circle. People go to tennis games, don't usually attend classical music competitions, so it's not like any of them know you. Oh really? You, me, Shuichi and Cyril go to tennis games, and yet we're here. Well yeah, that's because we know June and he's competing. Yes, and if it's possible for those circumstances to exist for us, does it also stand to reason that it can be true for someone else? Besides, you yourself admitted you like classical music. I suppose you're right. I guess I went a little overboard. Yeah, because if Hector is the one lecturing about this sort of thing, you should take that as a clear sign you need to rein it in a little. Hey! That's true. Well, I'm not that bad. You're the ones who keep arguing in public and end up getting people complaining about you. Remember that time in the diner a while back? Ugh, ugh. I give them a smug smile. Yo, we're back. Uh, so I see, did everything go okay? Yeah, they opened ex up an exception for me since I was actually increasing the difficulty of my performance. Well, I did say that they'll, they'll double the amount of points deducted for each mistake I make. Well, that's crazy. Why would you agree to that? Why not plan on making any mistakes? Haha, <laughs> see? I asked him the same question. He answered me with the same thing. Sai so gives him a few enthusiastic slaps on the back, laughing. She nearly sends him down to the floor. Why did you get so bored, girl, by Ashikun? Ow, ow, Mr. Grishi Sam, please stop slapping me. What? Well, not you too. I'm not even that strong. I'm not Shuichi. Well, it's not about being strong, Sai Chan. It's about not knowing how to control your strength. Oh, like I want to hear that from you. Sai gives him a cold stare. Well, I don't hurt people at random. Anymore. I add to his sentence. Yeah, yeah, anymore. Sai huffs, unamused. Alright, I won't touch anyone ever again. I'll spend the rest of my cold, sad existence without knowing what the warmth from the other person's touch is. Happy now? She starts being melodramatic in an attempt to state her displeasure. Yes. Without batting an eye and giving no attention whatsoever to her drama, June answers her with a single word. Jeez, that's cruel, Kobayashi Kun. Any time. He answers with feigned ignorance. The reason I can tell it's not legit ignorance is because his mouth is quivering with an attempt to suppress laughter. You know, you two could definitely form a co comedy duo. Kobayashi Kun could be the straight man and Mizugishi san could be the funny girl. A comedy duo or a double act, a traditional form of humour, which. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to skip this, I actually know all that. 
This now grew up watching Walking and Wise. Lauren Hardy. Yeah. <coughs> anyway. Uh, same girls to be said of the following parents. Me and you, you and Sire, Hector and June Coon, and me and Hector. Hey, I disagree with that. I'm clearly the straight man in our pairing. What are you trying to fool here? You're barely qualified to be the straight man in your pairing with Kobayashi Kun. Hey, rude. The only thing worse than a fool is a fool in denial. Hey! Guys, please don't start arguing. I have to leave to go backstage in two minutes. I very much prefer you didn't kill each other while I was gone. Keikun and Shuichi fist bump, smiling smugly at me. I stare at them, exasperated. When's your performance start again? Or oh, 12.30. I said to go backstage to prepare. All participants are supposed to wait back there for their performances. Uh, sounds like waiting for your performance to come up will be boring. No offence, Mr. Bushi Sam, but why did you come here to dislike classical music that much? To cheer you on, of course. How's actually going to bring a branch of bandanas and a cheering flag and made it home, but Keikun said I wasn't allowed to. She pouts. I already told you, this is classical music. Making any sort of noise during performances is in bad form. You might distract the competitors. Oh, that's boring. Do you want to watch it then? Just go home. No, then we'll be able to watch June Kun perform. Then stop whining. You don't have to say it like that. Mr. Gishi san, you already knew this was going to be a classical music performance. You knew other people were performing, and you knew you didn't like the sort of music. So why did you choose to only complain now? Why even show up at all? Because I have to encourage Kobayashi Kun, of course. Keiko looked over to June and snapped his fingers, calling his attention. Hey, Kobayashi. Oh, yeah? How do you feel about someone coming to watch who hates the music and is only here because they think they have to? Well, well. June glances over at Saya, sheepishly rubbing his cheek. I want people to appreciate my music, so it makes them feel a bit uncomfortable if someone's coming over against their will. Uh, uh, but I'm really happy to have you all here. I'm really touched you to come all the way here to see me perform, even more so knowing you don't really like classical music. So, are you happy about it or not? Which one is it? Yeah, you're 100% contradicting yourself. Um, I might have gone a little too far, sorry. I was only trying to make the point. Complaining about being here in Kobayashi would only make him feel bad. Sorry for putting you on the spot, Kobayashi. So if on cue, Saya bows down. I'm sorry if I've been complaining too much. No, 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 it's fine. It doesn't bother me too much. Honestly, I'm just happy you all cared enough to come see me. Of course we'd show up. You're one of us now. Saya gives him a thumbs up, smiling widely. Yes, you're one of us now. My condolences. Honestly, I won't lose this for anything. Just go kick some ass, okay? Shuichi gives him a few light taps on the back. As they all say their piece, all four of them turn over to me, look at me with expectation. What? Come on, Hector, give him some words of encouragement. Oh, uh, well. It's okay, Hector san, you don't need to say anything. A beeping noise echoes through the lobby sound system. Competitors in the 12th Sakura University Piano Competition, please move backstage for preparations. I have to go. Already? Can't you stay a little longer? No, it's easy if the organisers are all ready backstage. Plus, I need to change and I need time to focus, so. Uh, good luck, Kobayashi kun. June nods, turn around to join the mass of people who started going towards the backstage. June! I don't know why, but I suddenly had an urge to speak up. I called out to him after he took a few steps away from us. June turned around, looking at me with curiosity. I believe in you. June looked dazed for seconds if he didn't quite grasp my words. Well, thank you. This time he ran away, quickly joining the others and disappeared from our sights. Well, I guess we already know who his favourite is. Huh? Why is he so much happy when you encouraged him? He didn't even say five words. Well, why did the two of you get so close you'd be able to lift his spirits that much? Even you? Ah, whatever, I don't care anymore. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Oh, shouting out, ah, I don't care anymore, isn't the sort of thing a person does when they quote-unquote don't care. Oh, shut up. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I've known her for 12 years and I still have no clue how her mind operates. I you know her 70 years more and still won't understand it. Just roll with it. Shuichi puts a hand on my shoulder. Well, as much as I dread the idea, I have to go freshen up a bit. Can't exactly sit down to watch your performances smelling like a musky husky. They'll be opening the seating area. Sitting area now. So I'm going to go get her some seats. A girl gets up from the piano, bound to the crowd and walking out to the stage. She gets a very lukewarm reception, with only a few claps here and there. A week. 
Keiko has criticised every single performance that's been put out so far. I know classical music tends to be boring, but I can barely stay awake right now. Hey, Oshihara, have they all been that bad? You haven't had a single good thing to say about their performances. Not bad per se, but not good either. None of them stands out. Hey, Hector San, you're the one who's seen Kobayashi perform. Do you think he's better than them? Well, none of their performances made me feel the same way as June's did. When I saw him play, I felt like the music was calling to me, tugging at my heartstrings. I felt like I needed to get closer, to feel all the keys pounding with my whole body. But these kids, I don't feel anything. No rush, no excitement, nothing. I don't really know much about music. I know they don't really do anything for me. I think June is much better. Hmm. And now the next performer will be Shinji Kutagawa, performing in France Les Grand Fantaisie de Bravoure sur la Clochette. The crowd starts clapping as the lion walks onto the stage, donning a black suit, waving at the audience with a confident smile on his face. And that's him. How do you think his performance will go? I don't know. I hope for Kobayashi's sake that he's not good. The lion sits down in front of the piano. The audience goes dead silent, almost by instinct. Suddenly I feel very on edge. The few seconds of silence before he begins his performance start to fill me with a sense of dread. What if he's good? What then? I feel like my heart is going to explode. If I'm like this, how much June be feeling, feeling right, right about now? I hope he's okay. He starts performing and I instinctively hold my breath. The keys echo softly, slowly beginning to weave a slow melody. This doesn't seem as amazing as Kekun mentioned. I start feeling angry at him in June for making me feel so on edge for nothing. This is what you're afraid of? This is no... No, he's good. But this song sounds so easy. Her grand fantasy starts off really slow. It suddenly speeds up about three minutes. That's what will make or break his performance. If he can do that part correctly, then... Here it comes. He suddenly speeds up his performance so much I can barely recognise it's the same song. He's not just fast, he's oppressively fast. Fees have suddenly been pounded in submission. I instinctively hold my breath. My heart rate increases exponentially. I feel like the sheer magnitude of the performance forbids me from uttering a single word. There's so much I want to say, but my body is frozen in place and refuses to listen. The words are caught in my throat, unable to be let out. If it's like this, if he's this good. Shit, please don't let June be watching his performance. Please, God, don't let him watch this. If he does, I'm pretty sure his spirit will break. He finally stops his performance. It feels as if the enormous weight that is pressing down on the audience is suddenly lifted as everyone ble- breathes a collective sigh of relief. Kutagawa kun gets up from his seat, panting heavily. His legs wobble a bit, but he makes his way to the front of the stage, bowing down to the audience. The crowd immediately erupts in cheers, giving the Kutagawa kun a stand innovation. The sound is so loud it almost shakes the entire concert hall. This was without a doubt the best performance so far. You can tell that from how the crowd reacts. After bowing down to the crowd, he walks out to the stage as there is another beat followed by Nauta's voice. There will now be a 15 minute interval. Audience members are advised not to be away from their seats more than 10 minutes as they might miss some of the ensuing performance. Shit. Keikun was the first to break the deathly silence that had fallen on us. When's Kobayashi Kun's performance? I swallow hard, trying to steady myself. He's next. Double shit. Yeah. Having a follow-up on a performance like that, I don't think he'd be able to. He watched this. Something in my heart tells me he watched that performance. And I know he won't be able to go out on stage after that. Uh, save my seat for me. What? Huh? I get up from my seat and run out of the hall. I run to the backstage entrance. When I try walking into the door, a ram dressed in a uniform stops me. Uh, excuse me, sir. Only competi- competitors are allowed backstage. I need to see my friend. I'm sorry, but like I said, only competitors are allowed. Like I care. I push him to the side, nearly knocking him against the corridor wall and run past him. Wait, stop! It isn't hard at all for me to bolt past him. As soon as I'm in, I start looking for June. Where could he... Ah! I stop dead in my tracks as I see a familiar figure wearing a white suit sitting down on the floor, his face buried in his knees and his entire body shaking as very quiet sobs come out of him. June? I timidly reach out to him, putting a hand on his shoulder. He looks up at me, tears streaming down his face. Oh, Hector San? Takes him a while to recognise me. As soon as he does, he wipes his tears away with the cover of his suit. What are you doing here? I... Hey! 
Employee knocked aside when I barged my way into the backstage comes up to us looking furious. You kid, come back here. Shit. He grabs my arm and starts pulling me away from June. No, no, wait, I need to stay here. I don't give a flying rat's ass. I'm kicking you out of... Wait. June calls out to the man holding me, stops and looks back. I'm a competitor. Aren't I allowed by the rules to have someone with me for support? June gets up from the floor, staring down the employee, which is quite a feat considering the man is taller than even me. Well, that's usually reserved for family, and you have to declare them beforehand. I understand, but my parents couldn't attend today due to personal reasons. The rest of my friends have come with me. I'm sorry, could you please let him stay? Well, this kid nearly threw me against the wall trying to bust his way in. You're asking me to let that slide? I'm deeply sorry. June bows, his face going so low that I'm afraid he'll just keep going and he'll hit the floor. Oh, wait, June, you don't have to apologise for my... I'm so sorry, he's just worried about me. He didn't know what he was doing. I'll take full responsibility for his actions. June. The ram looks from me towards June, who's still bowing. His expression seems to have softened a bit, but he still looks very angry. I got my knees and beg if you want me to. What? No, June, that's going too far. I should be the one to apologise. There's no need. The ram lets go of my hand, his eyes fixed on June. Lift your head, kid. It's that important you'll let your friend stay. I won't report this, otherwise you could end up being penalised due to him. June straightens himself back up, smiling at the employee. Well, thank you, sir. He nods. Don't mention it, and you? He turns to look at me, and that sharp, angry look flashes again in his eyes. Behave. Thank you, lucky stars, no one else was here to see this. You'd have hurt your friend's chances. He turns around and walks away, turning the corridor disappearing from our sight. <sighs> June lets out a sigh of relief as he leans his back against the wall and slumps back down to the ground. June, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to... Why no? What are you doing here, Hector-san? I, I came to check up on you. I was worried. I thought so. He eggs his knees, resting his chin on them and looking straight ahead. The Kuta Garakum was something else. After I saw his performance, I just felt like it's impossible for me to beat him. So it's like I thought. He really did watch that performance. It really did crush his spirit. I sit down next to June as close as I can without actually touching him. He seems to hold his breath for a second, then sure what I'm doing. Then he relaxes. I'm sorry to have worried you. Oh, it's okay, it's what friends are for. What about now? How do you feel? I... His body starts shaking again. I, I should have come here, it was a mistake. I should have just stayed out of the competitions. I shift my body and kneel next to him, reaching out my hand to touch his face. June freezes, looking at me like a deer in the headlights. I wipe away the tears at the beginning with my right hand, caressing his cheek as I do so. That's not true, June. You've been practicing day and night for this. You're more than ready. No, I... I can't play. His voice sounded so distant and lonely. There has to be a way for me to console him. Maybe... Before I even have time to properly think about it, I wrap my arms around June, pull him close to me and placing his head on my chest. What are you, Hector-san? It's okay. I start stroking the back of his head, doing my best to sound warm and welcoming. Soon enough, the dam bursts. June clings tightly to my shirt and buries his head in my chest, sobbing. I hold him there for what feels like many minutes, waiting for him to calm down. Little by little, his sobs become quieter and less numerous. When it seems like his sobbing has finally died down, I speak up. Why do you think you can't play? June pulls away from me, looking down at the floor. Once again, I wipe the tears from his face and smile at him. My hands, they feel cold. I realise his hands are still shaking. I grab hold of one of his hands and give it a squeeze. You mean this hand? He pulls his hand away from me, looking down at the floor and nodding. They feel so, so cold. I can maybe even move them. I just, I don't know what to do. I can't play like this. His voice is so small and sad, I'm afraid he might start crying again any second. He's so nervous, his hands and maybe feet are feeling cold. I remember I used to feel the same when I just started playing competitively. June, give me a hand. Even when stressed, he diligently does what I ask of him. I grab his wrists and put both of his hands together, palm against palm. Then I wrap my hands around his. What? I gently pull his hands towards me and exhale on them. Hector San, what are you doing? I look him in the eye, making sure to give him the gentlest, warmest smile I can. I'm warming your hands up so you can play. 
I know his hands aren't exactly cold, but I'm just hoping I can somehow get him past whatever block has him like this. I managed to defuse his last panic attack. I won't be giving up with this one. Hey, Junkun, don't you think this is alright? I speak in a soft voice. My use of the honorific seems to court his attention. I caress the back of his hands with my thumbs, trying to seem as encouraging as I can. I'm working your hardest so far. I want to enjoy everyone in your performance. Performance only you can make, isn't that true? A performance only I can make? I nod slowly. I don't understand much about music myself, but shouldn't your music get your feelings across? And why don't you, instead of worrying about getting a perf perfect performance, just try to show everyone how you feel? I loved watching that first performance of yours. I know I've seen you perform once or twice after that. That one really struck a chord with me. I felt as if your song was calling out to me. It was warm and gentle and passionate. I'm sure you weren't trying to show people how good your skills were. You're just happy to play and wanted to pour your feelings into the piano. So why can't you do that again? I, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to win. I shake my head in negative. Oh, I don't believe that for even just a second. No one in this hall has managed to touch me the way you're playing, did you? I believe in you. No matter what you do, I'm sure you'll be doing your best. So isn't this all right? Can't you just play how you want to play? Well, I don't have these com competitions to judge, but wouldn't it be better if you put out the best performance you can instead of just worrying about getting everything completely perfect? June stares at me. His fur is matted from his tears and his eyes are red, but he looks calm. I... I hold his hands a little bit tighter, trying to encourage him in any way I can. June nods. I'll try. I'll try to put my feelings in my music. Hopefully. Just to finish his sentence, Brady know he can do it. As long as he can stay calm, there's no reason he wouldn't be able to. Uh, June Kobayashi? Ah, wrong voice. June Kobayashi? The worker from before peeks his head through the hallway, calling out June's name. June pulls away from me and immediately gets up. Yes? The interval is about to end. You have two minutes. All right. June nods, suddenly full of energy. The ram smiles and walks away. All right, Hector, son, I'm going now. Please watch over my performance. Right, I have to hurry back to my seat then. See you later. See you later. I turn to walk away. Oh, and one more thing. What is it? Thank you. Caught by surprise, I don't react for a few seconds. Then I nod and start running back to my seat. By the time I reach my seat, June is already halfway to the piano. Where the hell were you? Shuichi leans up to me, frowning. I went to see June. What? Why would you? Shh. Someone shushes us from behind. Shuichi glares at me and leans back into his own seat. June sits in front of the piano, putting one of his hands on his knee and the other on his chest. He seems to be holding something. A pendant? Even if I have good eyesight, I can barely make it out. At what seems to be a full minute, he finally adjusts himself on his seat and places his hands on the keys. The song starts very slow. June plays the initial keys with only one hand. The few whispers that could be heard in the audience seem to have died down the instant he started to play. Even though his movement seems to be tense and robotic, the melody comes out easily and pleasing to hear. As he continues to play, June seems to relax. He starts swaying back and forth the rhythm of the melody. His tail begins to move slowly in the air. He's definitely getting into it. Looking to the side, I see Keikun tapping his feet to the sound of the music. Sai looks the first time like she's completely awake and not about to doze off. Shuichi's lips are curved in a proud smile, as if he were a dad watching his son's first ball game. Here it comes. Keikun murmurs just as the song seems to slow down to a halt. Then... The song immediately picks up the pace, completely switching gears and becoming insanely fast. No way! Keikun's reaction mirrors out the entire audience. Surprise, perplexity, admiration. It is without a doubt that June is playing this song flawlessly. Even a layman like me can tell. As he continues to hammer up the keys with practice skill, June's entire body moves along to the melody, creating a vivid performance that fills the halls with a rich, confident sound. I feel it echoing deep inside my chest. This is the same feeling as when I saw him playing it for the first time. It takes every fibre of self-control I have to keep myself from getting up and walking towards the stage. I want to get even closer. It's so moving that I feel like I could cry. With the performance already over the day, all that is left is to wait for the results to be posted. Yeah. June has been pouting ever since he came out to the lobby, already changing into his regular clothes. 
Harry told you to cheer up. Your performance was amazing. Stop sulking. Oh, just tell him to cheer up. Isn't going to magically cheer her up, you know. Three of us have been trying to cheer up June's spirit since he rejoined us. And fortunately, the results have been very mixed. Meanwhile, his sire is waiting by the notice board to see the results when they finally get posted. I just feel like I bombed it. You didn't bomb it, I'm telling you. Your performance was amazing. There's no doubt in my mind that you'll snag second place. I need first place. If I don't get it, there's no chance for me to go to Germany. I know that. I just can't tell you that you'll win because I'm not so sure. I think I'll be very close. Well, I don't really understand much about music, but I thought June Coon's performance was better, didn't you? Well, it depends. Go by how she didn't go with the standard interpretation. That might not fly while the judges. Regardless, I know that in technical terms he was number one, but... It basically comes down to whether or not the judges like his interpretation of the song. If Akutagawa's performance was higher in technical skill to, due to the duration of that piece, Kobayashi's was faster and more refined. It comes down to the judges' personal taste then. That doesn't sound too good. Well, it's not. That's why everyone tends to only play the standard interpretation. You won't charm any judges' in individuality. You'll make sure none will dislike so much they fail you. I, I didn't know that. I suddenly feel very awkward for suggesting that he do that. If June ends up failing because of this, I'll feel incredibly guilty for a long time. I'm sorry, June, I suddenly suggested you play like that. Wait, you're the one who suggested he do that? Of all the reckless... Th June lifts her hand up in the air, cutting Kei Kun off mid-sentence. It's all right, Hector-san. That was a good advice for me. If I'd gone fixated on playing the song perfectly instead of just playing it how I wanted, I'd have been crushed by my own anxiety. Playing it like that is the only reason I was able to play at all. If they fail me for that, then so be it. What is this adorable creature? Before my impulses can take me over and force me to hug the shit out of June, Shinji Kutagawa approaches us. Well, there you are, I've been looking for you for almost ten minutes. Look on his face is both angry and scary. Even I suddenly feel like taking a step back. June, on the other hand, doesn't retreat. He stares back at the line with an intensity I never thought he's capable of. Well, it's a big lobby after all. How are you doing, Akutagawa kun? Honestly, of all the stupid things you'd have done, why didn't you go with the standard interpretation? You basically threw in the towel the moment you did that. It's very subtle, but I can notice June's body shifting a little bit when he hears that. Maybe he's not as confident he's trying to portray himself. June looks down the floor for just a second. I... Well, at least that's what I'd like to say. Akutagawa sighs, lifting both of his hands to the air and shrugging. I never thought you could do that well. I thought you'd be rusty after being out of the stages for seven years. Instead, you came back sharper than before. Kudugawa's penetrating gaze softens considerably as he looks over the perplexed tiger. Congratulations, Kobayashi-kun. No matter what the judges say, you're the victor today. For I won't lose next time. Without even giving time to answer, the lion turns and walks away, leaving June gaping in his spot. Well, that was something. That guy's weird, for sure. <laughs> June catches everyone by surprise and he suddenly hunches and starts laughing loudly. What, what the? Oh, sorry, sorry. He takes a few seconds to calm himself, wiping away a small tear from his left eye. How can he laugh so carefree like that? Go to Gowakun, it really hasn't changed at all. He's always pretty blunt about stuff like that. You tell me, he's always, always like that? June nods. Well, Kutagawa Kun is very demanding of himself. He's always quick to praise people when he thinks they deserve it, and always admits to his own shortcomings when he thinks they exist. He always admits to defeat if he thinks he's been defeated. If the judges give him first place, he'll still consider himself the loser. That's the kind of pianist he is. Talk about a serious attitude. Well, it's what you'd expect for someone aimed for the pros. He doesn't have time to make excuses for himself. He just takes in everything that he can and moves on. Yeah, I guess we could all stand to learn a few things from that guy then. Guys! Sai comes running towards us, getting so loudly that everyone in the earshot turns to look at the source of this sudden noise. The results! Well, how did it go? What were they? Sai was hunching over her hands on her knees, panting and gasping desperately for air. F? 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 What? F first place! Really? June immediately latches onto her, grabbing her arms with both his hands and looking her in the eye. Sai swallows once and nods emphatically. You got first place! June stares at her wide-eyed. His hands start to shake and he stumbles backwards, collapsing on a nearby bench. Big droplets start well up in his eyes. He pulls out a pendant from his pocket and holds it tightly in his hands, touching it to his forehead. 
Thank God. He then starts sobbing uncontrollably. And here we are, the next day, Saturday. So Hector's alarm is going off, and uh, for this day, we're going to spend time with Shuichi. So that will be in the next video. Until then, bye for now.